Thanks to GiveWell, an organization that makes it easy to find excellent charities to trust, for sponsoring today's episode. Follow the link in the description to donate, and be sure to use the fundraiser code HEALTH at checkout to make sure your donation gets matched. The CDC is urging those who are pregnant or trying to become pregnant to get vaccinated against COVID-19, but vaccination rates remain low in this group. Pregnancy is a sensitive time, and feeling nervous about medications or other medical interventions is perfectly reasonable. At Healthcare Triage, we find comfort in the data when we're nervous about something, so this one is for anyone feeling hesitant about getting vaccinated while pregnant. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. To kick things off, Tiffany, our writer and script editor here at Healthcare Triage, would like to assure you that she received her COVID-19 vaccine while pregnant, and that besides having some weird superpowers, that baby turned out very cute and totally fine. And I can't believe I feel compelled to say this, but the superpowers thing is 100% a joke. But in all seriousness, a major concern for pregnant women is, of course, the safety of their baby. There have been some rumors that the vaccine increases the risk of miscarriage and or that it causes problems with fertility. So we examined data available as of October 21 to see if there was any basis to these claims. To the research. The effect of the vaccines on fertility, pregnancy, lactation, and offspring have been tested in preclinical animal studies with no adverse outcomes. Pregnant and lactating women have so far been excluded from human trials for the COVID vaccines, though a small number inadvertently became pregnant while participating in some trials. For example, 23 women became pregnant during the Pfizer trial. 12 of those 23 pregnant women received the vaccine, and 11 received the placebo. Two miscarriages were reported, both in the placebo group. A preprint on the Sinovac Phase 3 study in Brazil reported four pregnancy-related events, one in the vaccine group and three in the placebo group. Neither of these allow us to make any big conclusions about the vaccines during pregnancy, but we do have other ways to approach the question. A preprint published in August examined data from the V-Safe Pregnancy Registry, a voluntary smartphone-based surveillance system of the CDC. This study, which has yet to be peer-reviewed, included data from individuals who had at least one dose prior to becoming pregnant or within the first 20 weeks of pregnancy. The authors report that the risk of spontaneous abortion between 6 and 19 weeks gestation is no higher than the risk seen at baseline, meaning that getting the vaccine didn't increase the number of spontaneous abortions that are known to naturally occur. Similarly, a published study of over 35,000 V-safe participants found that adverse pregnancy and neonatal outcomes in vaccinated individuals were comparable to those seen before the COVID-19 pandemic, i.e. comparable to a time before COVID vaccines. The V-safe registry includes data from over 50,000 pregnant women and so far has reported no serious adverse events related to the vaccines. A similar registry in the United Kingdom has also reported no safety concerns. As for possible effects on fertility, a study published in September examined implantation rates in vaccinated women with antibodies, they'd had the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, unvaccinated women with antibodies, and women with no antibodies, finding no differences in implantation rates between the three groups. And since we're talking about minimizing risks related to pregnancy, we have data on the risks associated with contracting COVID while pregnant. For example, a cohort study published in April examined over 2,000 pregnant women from 18 different countries and found that when compared with non-pregnant women, pregnant women with COVID-19 were at higher risk for several issues, including preeclampsia and preterm birth. Another study conducted in Washington state reported a hospitalization rate of 10% for pregnant individuals compared to a rate of 2.8% for their similarly aged non-pregnant counterparts. This study also reported an increased risk for preterm birth among women with severe COVID at the time of delivery. Similarly, a cohort study published in May reported higher rates of fetal death, preterm birth, preeclampsia, and emergency C-sections among unvaccinated mothers and their babies. So skipping the vaccine involves risks, including for the baby. On the contrary, the data suggests that vaccinated mothers pass on high levels of antibodies to their babies, which kind of seems like a superpower, meaning that both mom and baby are protected. That also means the people around your baby, grandparents, siblings, and more, are further protected. Like I was with the recent Alzheimer's drug, I'm always vocal when I don't think the benefits of a medicine are worth the risk. In the case of getting vaccinated, the benefits so heavily outweigh the risks, pregnant individuals included. 
If you're watching healthcare triage, you might be someone who places a lot of value on research. Researching which charities you want to support can be a lot of work. Well, great news. GiveWell makes it easy to find excellent charities to trust. GiveWell spends over 20,000 hours each year doing intensive research on charities, and all of that research is available to anyone to view on their website. So if you want to give to charity, but aren't sure how to choose an organization, GiveWell can help. And right now, GiveWell is matching donations from first-time donors, dollar for dollar, up to $250. Click on the link below to donate, and be sure to use the fundraiser code HEALTH at checkout to make sure your donation gets matched. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on Mullen Appear and for treating COVID. We'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe down below and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help make the show bigger and better even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevens, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.